You know who Hesenkos reminded me of? Anaris. Just something about them both. Their willingness to sacrifice others? That endless ache for power? Yeah. Maybe that's it. With Anaris banished and Hesenkos defeated, at least they'll never meet. How goes your study of the Archive, Bellara? Really good. I'm making progress. Some of it's just Anaris's plots or lists of feuds. He had a lot of feuds. But there's useful stuff too. Maybe in the far future, we can repair some of Arlathan. The Veil Jumpers must be ecstatic. They keep saying it's dense reading and super complicated, but I'll convince them. I thought about it, but I don't get how they're complicated. Uh, beg pardon? Oh, ghosts. What we were talking about before? There are two main strands of thought. That ghosts are mortal souls returned, or that they're simply echoes reenacted by inhuman spirits. What about ghosts knocking things off shelves, or writing in blood on the wall? Writing in... Have you been reading those serials Harding's so fond of? Oh, yeah. We swap them all the time. Yeah. Ah. If you're curious about the undead, Bellara, I could arrange an excursion. <gasps> to see ghosts? Far better. All sorts of unique entities dwell in the deep necropolis. Where should we start? The unspoken valley? The charnel bridge? Oh, but the nightmare fogs returned there lately. Let's wait until it clears. I'll get new notebooks. So, ghosts are complicated. What about vampires? Ah, there. The stories have a bit more substance to them. Really? Vampires exist? I mean, really exist? When a hunger demon possesses a corpse, the resulting abominations seek blood, you see. Oh, okay. I knew about that. Do I detect disappointment? A little bit, sort of. So can those abominations turn into bats? I was speaking with Nev earlier, Bellara. She's actually heard rumors of creatures that sound like your vampires from the serials. Really? Where? How? Certain Tevinta Magisters have apparently attempted to bond with hunger demons. It would grant them tremendous power but also an unending craving for blood. That's amazing! And really bad, of course. I can't wait to ask Nev about it! So Nev said, if the rumors are true, they don't lead anywhere good about vampires in Minrathis. I think we should prove it. We can lure them out, see what works. Whenever we can, I mean. We might cause a stir. They're very permissive about magical alterations in Minrathus. Then again, this is exactly the sort of thing Davron keeps proposing. Ooh! A group excursion! I never get used to it. The ancient elven magic, I mean. How so? It feels weird. Different from other magic. It is more powerful than most of what we're used to, certainly. Maybe. A little bit, but it, it's more than that. It, it feels... almost cold. How interesting. Is it an external sensation? No, it's... inside cold, not outside cold. I understand what you meant about old elven magic feeling cold, Bellara. Really? I don't even know if I did. The Morn Watch pulls on very different magic for our rituals. It's more still than what you'd use to manipulate rock or summon lightning. It anticipates. I'm not sure I'd like that. Magic just waiting for me? Perhaps. But it lends a solid foundation to our work. Maybe... Bracing is the right word. For what? 
the ancient elven magic that we were talking about. Every time I use one of the artifacts, it wakes me up like a bucket of cold water, only not cold. I wonder why that is. All magic touches the Fade. Perhaps the old elves tapped something we've lost. What you said about ancient elven magic, the way it touches the Fade, I think you're right. You've made a discovery. So, um, don't be mad, but I... I went outside the bubble at the lighthouse. Belara, That was rather foolhardy. I know, but I was safe, mostly. Anyways, when I went out there, I could feel it. Somewhere, like the elven magic. Ancient elven magic draws from the deep fade. Fascinating. The amount of magic you could harness. Explains a lot about how they did what they did. Did I tell you, Professor? That artifact that measures local ambient magic? I got it working. I'll never understand how you make sense of all those minuscule conks. You won't believe what I found yesterday in the lighthouse, Professor. Go on. A box with wheels inside as small as, well, as a wheat grain. If we connect them up and restart the artifact, it'll do something. I'm not sure what, but let's try. Is this one of those devices you've collected with all those rods and levers and such? So many. I can't wait. I wish I'd been more help with that elven artifact, Belara. But, Professor, you got the main enchantment working. Oh, a child could reweave a fraying autotelic bond. It's the internal mechanisms that confound me. Okay, the box has a lot of little bits, but if you look for sets of threes... I'll attempt it. Are the Morn Watch's magic artifacts very different from the old elven ones? Elven artifacts are powerful, but I've noticed a certain rigidity in their magic. Some of our own greatest treasures are lost. The skull of Sabinar, the key of dead dreamers, the crown of the moon. That's too bad. Do yours ever make weird buzzing noises? Is this about that elven device of many parts? It's like there's an invisible bee somewhere inside it. So, Professor, I tried out that box-shaped elven artifact. Alone? No, Strife was there. Anyways, I thought such a complicated device would be for controlling energy or gravity or fade channeling. What did it do? It's... it's a music box! Oh. <laughs> How harmless. What did Strife think? He laughed so hard he cried. You know what? I'm actually glad that elven artifact turned out to be a music box. Oh? It's so nice. Sometimes it's easy to forget the ancient elves were mostly regular people, not monster gods. And that those regular people were the first to try stopping Elgernon and Gilanane. That ancient battle bought us time. Yeah, and I'm not wasting it. One wonders, did Solus craft the lighthouse himself? Too bad we can't ask. It's for the best. Yeah. Hey there. Let's continue our discussion. Yeah, I'd never trust the God of Lies. Nor I. Right. Hmm. Though if one were, theoretically, in Rook's position... I'd have so many questions about Arlathan. To have even five minutes to ask Solus about the Veil. Tell me, Alara, what training did you have as a young mage? My clan's keeper showed me the basics. And afterwards? I tried it a lot and saw what worked and what didn't. Then I met the Veil Jumpers and read books when I could find them. I must introduce you to our head librarian. Really? Thank you. He's an excellent fellow, a little retiring, but Aldrich went through so much after he died. Oh. I'll remember not to ask about that. 
Have you ever considered joining a formal order of mages, Bellara? Huh, I don't know. Can I even do that? The Morn Watch would be open to it. Thanks, Professor. Really. But the Veil Jumpers need me. Arlathan's weird and dangerous, very, very dangerous, but it's home. I thought as much. The offer stands if you reconsider. The Watchers work so much with spirits, but none of you seem to get possessed. The Grand Necropolis wards discourage it, even as they draw spirits near, by providing them with... Event is dead too. Never been much good with combat. Weapons. About that subject from before, by providing them with bodies, we offer them peaceful existence with little need to possess the living. So no possessions ever? Oh no. The first thing a Watcher learns are warding spells. A malignant spirit never stops searching. The Grand Necropolis has so much background magic, but it's so tidy, quiet. Unlike the enchantments of Arlathan? Yeah, I mean, it's impressive, Professor. I haven't seen one time loop down there. Does that happen often in the forest? Strife and Irlin have stories. <laughs> 